press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Welcome back. Now, NASA launched the world's smallest satellite today. It fits in the palm of your hand, and it was designed by an 18-year-old Indian student. The 12th grade student from Tamil Nadu had entered a competition run by NASA's called Cubes in Space. Now, let me just show you the moment of liftoff. It happened only a few hours ago, a launch watched by that Indian team that built the Kalamsat, and it was one of 80 experiments actually on board. Well, I'm delighted to say that uh, that 18-year-old, Rifath Sharuk, uh, joins us uh, live on the program. And he's also joined by Dr. Srimati Kaysen, his mentor at Space Kids India. Welcome, both of you, here to the program. Rifath, to you, first of all, c congratulations in terms of what you and your team of colleagues actually did. What was that moment like when you saw the launch and it was your satellite on board? Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a real excitement. It's a real excitement, yeah. I should say. Uh, ultimate feel. <laughs> you know, we were just we were just uh, looking at uh, rock, uh, at satellites and rockets being uh, launched by ISRO. And today, you know, our own satellite is getting into space. I mean, it's a big moment for us. It's a real big moment for us. It really is. Rifath, tell me, what did you actually build? Because you, you built and designed it, didn't you? Yeah, actually, my team, uh, we designed a carbon fiber polymer structure for the Cube satellite. It is a technology demonstrator satellite, uh, which means before going to orbital flight, it will do a suborbital flight. Uh, uh, so in this mission, we are using 3D printing technology, so we can do the space missions in future more economical. And doctor, tell me, because you were his mentor and the rest of the team's mentor, how difficult technically was it? Because in the end, it's what, is it 64 grams? It fits in a four meter cube. It's tiny, isn't it? Absolutely, because that was the real challenge. We actually, about a year ago, we had built a CubeSat, which was 10 centimeters. And we, when we wanted to launch it, it costed almost about $80,000. And that's really huge. So we wanted to shrink the size and lessen the weight so that the satellite will be more economical. But then we wanted a launch provider. And I should say, uh, maybe nature conspired and you know our dream was fulfilled when this competition was announced and we just chanced upon this competition and today our satellite is on. Rifath, we're looking at pictures as you're talking to us of the satellite, you holding it up. Yeah. It is so tiny. Tell me about the setbacks because you must have had setbacks and difficulties trying to actually build this, make it work, make it so tiny. What were the setbacks? Actually, the main difficulty is uh, we need to measure the radiation uh, the satellite is exposed to. So for which we need to design a gigamolar counter which should fit inside the small cube. So it is a big challenge for us, but somehow we designed a small gigamolar counter and that's also worked fine in this mission. Doctor, t tell me one thing, because uh, there is so much excitement at the moment in India around space, around space technology. I mean, it has been driven. You had the Mars probe driven by young people, a lot of female scientists. Um, what is happening in India about space? Oh, well, I guess uh, we're all, uh, after the success of Mangalyan, the first, you know, uh, going to Mars, it's become a real craze for children. And when ISR was opened all the avenues by launching about 104 satellites and, you know, children have started uh, becoming more creative and innovative and uh, probably they want to leave Earth soon and go to Mars. <laughs> I know there's a, a Mars mission that India is also planning. Rifat, have you, have you always been interested in space and in technology? Yeah, actually, I'm interested in space technology from my childhood because uh, my dad was also a scientist. Uh, he was an astronomist. Uh, he was doing research in astronomy. So even from my childhood, I'm interested in space technology and astronomy. And, and Doctor, 
tell me more about the lifespan of this satellite because it's very, very short, isn't it? Uh, I'm looking at my watch and it, it could almost be finished because they have to retrieve the data. Tell me how all of that is going to work. Well, yes, it is uh, because it's a suborbital uh, launch. Uh, the mission is only about uh, three hours uh, and um, we will be retrieving the data a couple of hours later. And uh, uh, after retrieving the data, we, we will definitely share it with others because we were just waiting for the reaction of the 3D printed uh, shell, the cube shell, which is, what is the most interesting part of the entire satellite that we actually sent. And in terms of when you talk about data, what, what has actually been measured over the last few hours since this satellite went up? Yeah, actually, the data means here we have integrated ten about ten sensor with the onboard computer. It will uh, measure and monitor the changes happening inside the cube and also the, to the structure. So the data will be collected and stored on the onboard computer. So as soon as we retrieve the data, we can exactly we can know what happened to that uh, structure. And tell me, what happens next? Rifat, what are your plans for the next great adventure? Yeah, now we have successfully conducted the suborbital flight. Usually suborbital flights are also called as technology demonstrator missions because we created this technology for the first time. We are demonstrating that in the space. So our next step is to permanently launch the satellite in the orbit. Just a final question then to you, Doctor. I mean, what was it like mentoring these young people? What was it, six or eight? I mean, there they are working away, trying to really make giant strides for them. What was it like just overseeing all of that? It's just you were a mother to these children and bring them all together because each one is a different tangent. Yeah, you know, one is a flight engineer and he always speaks about the trajectory and the other speaks only about uh, the seeds that we actually sent uh, to space because we are thinking of space farming and space agriculture. So to put together and uh, bring in the correct kind of people to navigate this whole mission, I mean, it's, it's challenging, but absolutely interesting. Well, it's been uh, beyond interesting. It's been fascinating talking to both of you, uh, Rifat Sharouk and Dr. Shri Kaysun. Thank you very much for being here on today's programme.